All right, Peter, you may begin. Good morning, everyone, and welcome to Trade Talk Tuesdays. Uh, this is a program we've been doing in October, November with the US Department of Commerce, just bringing you some informal talks on, on different ways to help your company increase your exports. Um, today, we have a gentleman, Paul Ferreira, is gonna be talking about a um, tax setup where you can help reduce your taxes by exporting. And my name is Pete Tierney. I'm the director of the, the Harlem US Export Assistance Center. I'm relatively new to this position, but I've been exporting in the private sector for about 25 years. And I've been all over the world. And, you know, I always hear about other countries helping, helping their exporters by, you know, defraying taxes or reducing taxes. And I know a lot of people complain and say, why doesn't the US government do that? Well, Paul's gonna to talk today about a really well-kept secret. It's called the IC disc. And it's a way of setting up a, a tax um, format to help reduce the taxes on any of the products that you're exporting. It's really an amazing uh, setup. It's just, they're, they're, we need to get more people involved in doing it. And Paul's gonna to try to give you a high level overview. We only have about 20 minutes. So he's gonna give you a high level overview today and see if we can, uh, if you need any additional questions, he'll be there uh, in the future to, to help you walk you guys through it. Uh, again, this is Paul Ferrer and he's from the export uh, tax, oh, sorry. Export Tax Management Company in South Carolina. Thanks, Paul. Welcome to Trade Talk Tuesdays. Thank you, Pete. A pleasure to be here with you guys. And first, everyone on the call, uh, Pete described it very, very well. The IC disc is a very, I don't wanna call it a well-kept secret because it's not meant to be a secret, but it's a well-kept secret. It's, as everyone knows, the Internal Revenue Code, everyone's favorite book on yourself and your library, of course, is littered with a lot of benefits for us. And as an exporter, the IC disc is one of the, the best ones for you. So the first question for everyone is, what is an IC disc? Well, it stands for Interest Charge Domestic International Sales Corporation. Now, I'm gonna keep this very high level for 15 or 20 minutes and give you some time to take, uh, take your questions. Moreover, if you have any questions after the presentation, you'll have my contact information. Always feel free to email me or call me anytime. Uh, a little bit of our firm, we are an export tax manager. We're CPAs who specialize in international taxation. We then specialize in the IC disc. The IC disc is one of the most complex parts of the Internal Revenue Code, is why there's folks like us in the world. However, for exporters like you guys, it's very simple for you to use. Uh, it's analogous to, let's say, um, deducting your charitable contributions on your individual tax return. For the exporter, this is a very simple process. Now, with that said, what the IC disc is, the Interest Charge Domestic International Sales Corporation, we're not gonna get into detail today on what the interest charge means, but Domestic International Sales Corporation, it was originally acted in 1971, and it was modified in 1984. And in its current form, it's still the statutes written in 1984. What essentially this is, as Pete said very wisely, Many other countries in the world, we call it the OECD, or throughout the world, they have ways of incentivizing, in some degree, a lot of countries subsidize their exports. The United States doesn't subsidize our exports. However, we have the IC disc or an added incentive. So what this does, for, for a privately held company, it's a tax incentive for U.S. companies to sell products made in the U.S. and sell those products for use outside of the United States, i.e. an exporter. So why I stress this one point here, you do not have to be a manufacturer of a product to take advantage of the IC disc benefit. Moreover, you don't have to be the direct exporter. And there's a slide a few down, which I'm gonna go into more detail about that. So you could be, as an exporter, you could be the direct distributor selling your products overseas, or you could be selling your products that you manufacture or distribute through another distributor in the US who then exports your products. So just remember, domestic and export distributors qualify. How does it, how do we get our benefit is the next question I'm sure you're thinking. Well, imagine when you get your brokerage statement at the end of the year from Fidelity or uh, whichever brokerage you use, you'll see you get qualified dividends from some of the stocks you own. 
as a qualified dividend, as you know, it's taxed at a lower rate of tax, similar to a capital gain. What the ICDS does, it allows you to reclass some or all of your taxable income on those export sales to a qualified dividend at a rate of about 23.8%, as opposed to your ordinary income you pay in your individual tax return of 37%. So for those of you that might have S Corps, LLCs, and C Corps to a degree, again, I'm going to get very, very simple through this presentation. This works. And in essence, it's a small business incentive because the larger publicly traded corporations cannot take advantage of this, only privately held enterprises. Now, there's no limit to the size of the disk. I have clients that have four or $500 million of export sales. I have clients that have a million dollars. I have clients that have 500,000 of export sales. So remember, it's not limited in size, but it doesn't have to be too small or too large. Now, what is this? I'm gonna stress this. This is a statutory provision. It's a fancy way of saying it's law, just like deducting your mortgage interest or your charitable contributions. It's not an aggressive tax strategy, and it's not what we call an abusive tax shelter. The IC disk is a separate entity. And one would ask, well, why is this in the code? It seems too good to be true. Don't go through reading the treasury regulations. But this section here sums it up quite well. They understood this is all form and no substance, but it's here to help exporters. The, you're gonna, if those of you who spoke to your CPAs about this before, you're gonna hear something called, well, the 95% asset receipts test. Be very simple about that. What that means, the disc can only be to help you foster and promote export sales and reclass your income from ordinary income to a qualified dividend. The IC disc is a separate legal entity that we set up no one knows it exists except for you, your CPA, and the IRS. That is it. And the disc can only be used for this purpose of foster and promote export sales. You can't use your disc to hold real estate, to hold other assets. It can only be used for its purpose. And while we're going through this, guys, please feel free in the chat area. Feel free to ask me some questions. I'm all yours. So what qualifies for this benefit? As you probably have explained your CPAs in the past, the Internal Revenue Code is littered with abbreviations and acronyms and pseudonyms and so forth. Manufactured, produced, grown, or extracted. So in other words, anything in the United States that's manufactured, and I use the example textiles, shoes, shoes jewelry, clothing, produced, uh, produced food, films, software qualifies, architectural and engineering designs qualify for for projects outside the United States, grown, agriculture, huge export in the United States, processed timber. With that, the word processed timber, if you're uh, exporting raw softwood, i.e. pine trees, that does not qualify. And that's statutory language from the 1970s. Not sure why that's in there, but anything else in the timber world qualifies. Extracted, uh, seafood, metals, the things that don't qualify, oil and gas, coal, anything from out of the ground that's raw, and oddly enough, enriched uranium does not qualify for the disk, which is probably a good thing. So, and remember again, too, I'm going to stress the fact, direct or indirect exporters. So here I want to speak about this for the indirect exporter. A U.S. manufacturer builds a machine in New Jersey, sells that to a distributor in Pennsylvania. And then the distributor in Pennsylvania, who bought it from the manufacturer in New Jersey, sells that machine to a customer in Canada within a year. What does that mean? Both the manufacturer in New Jersey and the distributor in Pennsylvania can utilize an IC disk. Something else I want to stress, and I put this to use the country of Canada as an example, Canada and Mexico do qualify. When we think of exports, we think of, as a backdrop here, a ship going overseas. We can't forget Canada is our largest trading partner. All sales to Canada and Mexico will qualify. The countries that will not qualify are the blacklisted countries such as North Korea or Iran and US territories such as Puerto Rico, Guam, US Virgin Islands. Those don't qualify. Everywhere else qualifies. Uh, a trick of this, you folks that have dealt with the Exxon Bank, our brethren across the street in Washington, they, their requirement is no more than 50% of the cost of a product 
can be from outside the US to qualify for XM benefits. The disc is far more uh, giving in a sense. The products can be at least 50% US content. What that means for us is the total fair market value. So in other words, you sell a, a machine for $1,000 outside the US. No more than $500 of that machine's total value can be foreign components. So the reason I stress that, and this is going to be a little bit of accounting lingo, the gross margin on your product that you're exporting is U.S. source. So it's far more flexible. And another way of looking at this, if you're using XM financing for your export sales, you will surely qualify for the IC disc. No question asked. Uh, so always remember that too. If you have a product that might have, let's say, a, a laptop and there's chips from Taiwan in there. That doesn't disqualify it, as long as at least 50% of the fair market value is from the US. I know that's very common in our practice. Please keep that in mind. So the beauty of all this, ordinary income. So let's say an example, go to the next slide here. Here's the disk structure. What a disk is, the IC disk, it is a separate legal entity. It files its own tax return known as an 1120 IC disk. So the question is, why do we have to set up this separate legal entity to take advantage of the IC disk? I'm going to get a little uh, historical, a little, little tax nerdy here. In 1971, when this was enacted, remember, we didn't have the sophistication of ERP systems or very sophisticated accounting systems. Things were much different back then. So Congress said, let's have a separate entity to make it easier to track and examine these entities. Moreover, back in the old days, let's say the old days, uh, 1971, the IC disk could work two ways. Now, one way it would work is the IC disk would actually purchase products from the exporting company, take title to them, and sell them overseas. Now, I've been practicing for about 26 years. I've never seen that structure. It's far too complicated. And there are a couple out there, we don't deal with them, but for the most part, how this disk works, if we set up the separate legal entity, and then we calculate this magic number called the commission. So what happens is, remember I spoke earlier, the benefit you receive from your disk is reclassing ordinary income to qualified dividend income. And the question is, well, how much of that can we, can we reclass? That number, the amount that we reclass is the commission. That's a very, very lengthy, in-depth calculation. I can have this conversation offline with you if you guys have three or four hours to kill. But for sake of discussion today in a short amount of time, I'm gonna keep this very, very simple. What happens is, say here's your exporting company, you're exporting um, coffee cups, as I'm holding in my hand here. And we export $10 million of coffee mugs to Canada. We do our calculation and we say, okay, the commission or the amount of income that we can reclass from ordinary income tax to at 37%, we can reclass $1 million of income, which is the commission. So in essence, the exporting company, your coffee mug company, pays a million dollars to the IC desk. That million dollars is then immediately paid right back to the exporting company. So you say to yourself, well, did income really change? Overall, for financial statement purposes, not at all. However, for tax purposes, you see $1 million less of ordinary income and $1 million more of qualified dividend income. So those of you that are S-Corps or LLCs, when you get your Schedule K-1 from your CPA, you're going to see $1 million in the ordinary, less in the ordinary income box and $1 million more in the qualified dividend box. So the spread in those rates, and those rates will be different for each individual, is where your benefit is. So it could be 6 10 12, 13%. So that adds up very quickly. That's how the IC disk works. It's how you get the savings. Now, some things to remember. The IC disk is a separate legal entity. It is a simple C corporation incorporated within any state in the United States or the District of Columbia. It can only have one class of common stock. It has to have at least $2,500 of capitalization. It's just a very simple entity to set up. But it does have to be a walking, talking, living, breathing corporation. It has to have a checking account. 
where you deposit $2,500. The benefits of the IC disk start when you incorporate it. So example, say you're in New York State, you incorporate in New York State. The day the Secretary of State of New York stamps the articles of incorporation saying you're effective, your disk is effective. You can't go back in the past to reclaim the benefit. It's only on a go forward basis. It's unlike benefits such as the R&D credit or the work opportunity tax credit. The disk is only on a go forward basis. So you have to remember timing of the essence with the IC disk. You can incorporate it on January 1. You can incorporate it on December 28th, December, any point during the year. It's only on a go forward basis. Once the disk is incorporated, you request an EIN from the IRS, and then you file an election with the IRS to let the IRS know you want to be considered an IC disk. Uh, you have 90 calendar days to do all that. You don't want to be late. It's a $10,000 fee to beg for forgiveness from the IRS if you file that election link. Once again, remember, once it's incorporated, you can take advantage of the disk benefits, and then you have 90 days thereafter to file the elections and other compliance. Once the disk is incorporated, it's very non-invasive to your operations. Well, a big question I get, well, do I have to change my invoicing to my foreign clients? Not at all. Nobody knows you have an IC disk other than the IRS, your CPAs, your accounting staff, and you. That is it. The beauty of it is nothing changes over here. It's just simply it's facilitating this reclass of income. And again, the reason we still have the IC disk is because the statute was written that way in 1971. Uh, and it really hasn't changed much since then. There are some nuances, but we're not going to bore that today. A few more things I want to cover. Most importantly, it's not invasive. Remember, your inventory doesn't have to be segregated. I'll use an example. I have clients that export lobster. Uh, we all, I love lobster personally. And it's sold out of Maine, Massachusetts, Rhode Island. They'll have a tank of tens of thousands of lobsters. They pick lobsters out, go to box, go to the UK, go to Spain. Or they'll pick lobsters out, they go to Alabama or down to my home state of South Carolina. You don't have to physically segregate uh, export property from that export property. And as I said, remember, it merely collects the commission and pays a dividend. And most importantly, the one thing I want you all to realize after 20 minutes of your life with me, it's not too good to be true. And there's about 12,000 IC discs in the United States, but take that in context and how many exporters are in the United States that could be taking advantage of this. There's not enough of them out there. And again, if you guys have any questions after this, please feel free to call me at any time and I'll take any questions now. Excellent. Thanks so much, Paul. That was a great overview. Uh, we have a, a, a few, a, we have a few questions here. Uh, the first one was: As an exporter, will we need to invoice our export customers through the IC disk? Great question. The answer is no. Remember, nothing changes of your daily operations of your company of your exporting company. Now, remember too, the company itself. Say we have your company A is exporting lobsters. You could export 1% of your lobsters. You could export 100% of your lobsters. There's no requirement of how much your actual company has to export. But remember, nothing changes at your exporting company. Hmm. Great okay. question. And another one was, uh, where can I incorporate? Does it have to be like in Delaware? Is there certain states where I have to incorporate an IC disk? Some states are easier than others. We either use Delaware or South Carolina. Some folks are moving into Wyoming. Those are the easier states. There are states that will not tax a disk. New York State, Connecticut, uh, South Carolina. If you're operating in those states, some states like New Jersey is a little more difficult. But overall, we usually use Delaware. Uh -huh. okay. It's easy and it's quick. Okay, great. And then one other question was, uh, when can we start to realize the benefits of an IC disk after we get that set up? Remember, as soon as your disk is incorporated, so as soon as the Secretary of State says you are effectively incorporated as of December 1st, 2021, then you start taking advantage of the benefits. And the reason we use Delaware is because Delaware can turn them over very quickly. 
so then basically the next tax year when you when you file your taxes that's when you'd be realizing that is that right on the well no what'll happen is say we incorporate the disc as of december 1st 2021 and we'll right. be able to take advantage of the benefits for the rest of the year for this one month the reclass of the income would be relative to 2021. Uh -huh. okay. so it, and as if you're getting a dividend i'm gonna get a little technical but the dividend of a disc is deemed paid in the year it's earned so in other words if the dividend was the reclass was in 2021 that's when you realize the income of the dividend is in 2021. uh-huh okay so I have one point um, that I wanted you to stress too was the the thing that really caught me because I'm you know I I was in the export trade for years was the actual savings. I mean, there's a lot of price pressure, you know, for competing with some other Absolutely. countries. And you mentioned like six, ten to fifteen percent could be a benefit, right, for exporters. Yes. Remember when I explained to uh, folks that are in very competitive businesses? I let's pick on seafood again or any commodity where your margins are very thin due to competition. When you own an S Corp or an LLC, the S Corp or the LLC doesn't pay federal taxes paid at the individual level. So as an owner operator of an LLC or an S Corp, you're not thinking of after tax income. Now, when you have a disc in place and you're selling lobsters to Spain and you get a four cent per pound margin, you have to say to yourself, well, wait a minute, my after tax profit is much higher. So two things are going to happen. I'm going to make more money because my after tax margin is better. Or two, I can sell at a lower price to be more competitive in the world marketplace and still make the same amount of income. Because your focus is on after tax earnings. And it's something again we don't think about as S Corp or LLC owners. But you're exactly right. This is where the same to A, increase your cash flow in the United States, or B, make you more competitive because you can sell at a lower price and have the same after-tax margin. Right. Yeah, that's a...